All right, guys, welcome back to Data Wrangling with R. Uh, we're going to get into the Tidyverse and Tidy R. Um, from the previous video, I kind of described a little bit. It's a, a way to make data sets tidy and uniform, and that allows uh, for some real benefits over uh, previous uh, data frames that we were talking about. So let's get into it because I want to uh, have you annotate this. Um, last time, last video, I spouted everything and then uh, made you retype it anyway. So uh, let's talk about it. Um, so we're going to do tidy R, and we're going to call the, um, the library. Oops, library tidyverse. So um, how do we? make a tidy data set. Uh, well, the tidyverse um, follows three rules. And those are rule number one, stuff like that. Uh, each variable must have its own column. Number two, each observation as its own row. And number three, uh, each value has its own cell. So it is impossible uh, to satisfy uh, two of the three rules. So this leads to the following instructions for tidy data. So, uh, instruction one, put each data set into a tibble. And two, uh, put each variable into a column. Step three, profit. Right. Okay. Um, so, Picking one consistent method of data storage makes for easier understanding, undering, understanding uh, just next line, of your code and what is happening under the hood or behind the scenes. I think. All right, uh, let's now look at working with tibbles. So we did this a little bit in the last one, um, but we're gonna make our own kind of new data set for working with this um, because we're gonna look at some functions that work on uh, tibbles. So we're gonna run BMI tibble and then put the word woman in here. That's gonna pull up um, a data set um, Oh, I forgot to load tidyverse. If you get that, it's probably because you didn't load tidyverse. Um, so go up here and run this library uh, tidyverse one. Now if I run it, how about I spell woman? No, woman. There we go. Okay, so BMI. So if we were to click over here just to look at it real quick, uh, we have height and weight of uh, 15 different women. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do BMI and we're going to pipe down uh, and we're going to say mutate BMI equals 703 times weight and then we're going to divide that by height and we're going to square. So let me explain what this is doing right here. So this is taking our BMI tibble and we're piping down to say, okay, first look at the BMI tibble, then we're gonna call the function mutate. What mutate does is it takes some instructions and adds another column, right? And we're gonna say BMI, which is gonna be the header of that new column that we add. And then we're gonna tell what we want to fill in that column with. And so this is just the formula for, a simple formula for uh, calculating body mass index, right? 
And so you take 703 and you multiply it by the weight and then you divide it by the height squared. And so if I were to run this, you see that now our tibble has the third column, which we didn't have before, called BMI, because we named it right here. And then it fills in the values based on columns one and column two. So 24.0 is just the product of uh, 703 times 115 divided by 58 squared. So we've created a new column with additional data uh, based on our existing data in that data frame. So we can do more with tibbles or more with tidyverse. So we'll make another uh, kind of banner here. And I'm going to say spreading and gathering. Okay, um, sometimes you'll find data sets that don't fit well into a tibble. Uh, this is quite common. Um, we'll use the built-in data from Tidyverse for this part um, because they've made example data and that saves me from having to make uh, example data. Uh, so we'll start with table 4a. So if you just call table 4a, this is a built-in data set um, that, as you can see, we have um, uh, and this, this is some sort of cases um, that they, infection rate or something. So you can see the year, or the uh, country, the year, and uh, so there's 745 cases in 1999, 2,666 in 2000. Uh, in 2000. Um, let's annotate again. Um, as you can see from this data, we have one variable, column A, which is the country. Um, but columns B and C are two of the same. So remember if we go back to our uh, rules, uh, each variable has to have its own column. Well, one of the variables in this case is year. And we have year in two separate columns, right? So they've split up this data. Um, thus, there are two observations in each row. So again, going back to our rules, um, each observation has its own row. But in this data, the observation for 745 is also in the same row as the observation for 2,666. So it violates our tibble rules, right? For tidy data, this is not tidy data. Uh, but we can fix that, that's pretty easy. Um, so to fix this, uh, we can use the gather function. So table 4a, pipe it down, gather is our function, and we say what we want to gather. So we're going to say 1999, and you can use single quotes or double quotes for this, uh, 2000, so those are the two columns that we want to gather, and we're going to say key which is gonna be our new column head, is year. Uh, we should put that in quotes. And then our value equals cases. So if we are to run this, so the key, what the key does is it takes the column heads here and says what column is that gonna be? And so we say we want these to be gathered into one column and called year, and then we want the previous, the observations, to be gathered into a column and called cases. So if we were to look at this, we now see our data, we have the country, which we had before, that stays the same, and then we have a new column that says year, previously the year was a column head, and then over here we have cases, right? And so if we go, were to go back to our rules again, each variable has its own column. So our data has a country variable, a year variable, and a cases variable. 
uh, each observation has its own row. So the observations are all singular in one row here. And each value has its own cell, which these values all have their own cell. So we have now made a tidy data set. Nice, right? Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, let's look at another example. So if we call table 4B, so we just did 4A, let's look at 4B. We have a similar problem, right? So we have year split into two again. Um, so we can just do very similar um, As you can see, we have the same problem in table two, or sorry, four B. Um, so, just repetition, right? Table four B. Let's pipe down to the next line. Uh, gather, together. I'll show this double quotes this time. 1999, just to show you that it doesn't matter. 2000 are the year columns that we want combined and we want to combine them into a new column called year. Oops. Let's move back because it's what I'm showing. Um, and then we want the data at the bottom. So this data is different. So this data is actually population data. Um, so we're going to change our value um, and we're going to say uh, population. And close it off and run it. So you can see um, we similarly we did the same thing, but we were able to rename our population uh, very or last column is population. So we have country stays the same. We moved these uh, column uh, column names into its own column called year, and then all these observations we put into the third column and we call that population instead of it just being nebulous. And you can even just looking at this data, it shows that um, how nice tidy data is, right? Because when I first look at this chart, I don't know what these numbers mean, right? Because the column header doesn't. I'd have to go read the paper or look into the data set itself. But when I look at the tidy data, I can say, okay, country, Afghanistan, in 1999, they had, uh, what is this, 19 million, tw about 20 million people. Um, so beautiful, much more tidy, much nicer uh, to work with. Um, so now, what if you want to, want to join these two tables? Uh, we can use dplyr. So, table, we have to first, so with these commands up here, you notice that we are, um, we're not saving them into a, a variable. So, we got this printout here where we put that into a tidy format, but if I were to call table 4b again, it's back in its original shape, right? We're not saving any of these changes. So to save the changes, what we have to do is uh, save them into its own variable, right? So table uh, 4a uh, is gonna be table 4a. We're gonna pipe down uh, and we're gonna run this code again. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this, so copy paste um, and then I'm going to say table for B and I'm going to save this into a variable um, table for B type down and I'm going to copy and paste this again okay so now if I run this code So uh, see, now I have them saved as permanently saved, uh, as mutated, right? Um, mutated tibbles, that, or gathered tibbles that we did above. Now, if, what if I want to join them? Um, so we can do 
left join table for A, table for B. And if I were to run this, you see now we have taken table 4A and table 4B and combined them where the year and the, uh, the country cancel out because they're the same, right? So that's where they join, know how to join each other. And then cases and population are all added into a single uh, data set or a data table or tibble in this case. Um, so that's a nice convenient way of uh, joining two uh, of these different tables. Um, so let's stop there. Uh, make it easy. I'm, uh, 16 minutes, that's a good, uh, good length of time. So as you can see, uh, doing these tibble uh, data sets makes it easy to kind of move things around. One line of code to join two tables together, which is nice. Uh, one or two lines of code to mutate everything to put it into its correct orientation so it's a readable, uh, tidy data set. Um, so we're going to continue. There's a lot of functions to uh, be able to manipulate your data to the way that you want it. Um, so. We'll keep working on it and I'll see you in the next one.